the federal government has said that train services on the Abuja Kaduna rail line will resume in November. Hi, welcome to what's happening this at the top 10 stories. At number one, the federal government has said that train services on the Abuja Kaduna rail line will resume in November. The Minister of Transportation, Muazu Sambo, made this known on Monday while giving the scorecard of his ministry in Abuja. According to him, adequate security and surveillance had been put in place to ensure the safety of passengers. The minister, however, did not specify the date of the rail's commencement of service. Recalling the Nigerian Railway Corporation suspended train service along the route after terrorists attacked the moving passenger train in Kaduna on March 28, 2022, killing several and abducting scores of passengers. At number two, the National Executive Council of the Academic Staff Union of Universities held a meeting today, 7th November 2022. It was gathered that the meeting started around 12.40 p.m. The next meeting comes after the payment of half salaries to lecturers by the federal government. The union had described the October 2022 salaries as amputated and insensitive. Justifying the government's decision, the Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngige, noted that the government paid the lecturers pro rata. At number three, the Federal Capital Territory Administration on Monday in Abuja threatened to shut down the Area 1 shopping complex and market over alleged unwholesome activities by traders. The coordinator of Abuja Metropolitan Management Council, Malam Uma Shwaibu, issued the warning when he visited the market with other senior officials of the administration to ascertain the genuineness of several complaints received about the market. Shwaibu said that the mall, which was the first in Abuja, needs to meet the desired standard. He added that the market was recognized internationally and must be in conformity with set standards. At number four, the Central Bank of Nigeria has denied a purported plan to introduce 2,000 Naira and 5,000 Naira notes in the country. The CBN Director of Currency Operations, Ahmed Belu Umar, during an interview with The Voice of America, House of Service on Monday, stressed that the highest currency denomination in Nigeria remains 1,000 Naira notes. While calling on Nigerians to be wary of fraudsters and fake news peddlers, Umar said that anyone caught with fake banknotes should be reported to law enforcement agencies. On the level of awareness of the redesigned Naira notes, especially among the people in rural areas, Umar said the CBN will engage in a massive sensitization campaign as soon as the president unveils the new Naira notes. At number five, the Central Criminal Court in London, the United Kingdom on Monday, moved the trial of Deputy Senate President E.K. Ekwaramadu over alleged organ harvesting from May 2023 to January 31st, 2023. According to Channel TV, the Old Bailey agreed that arguments would be heard on the 16th or 19th of December 2022 before the commencement of the trial in January. Recall that Ekwara Madu and his wife Beatrice were arrested on June 23 and charged with conspiracy to traffic a person for organ investing in violation of the Morden Slavery Act 2015. At number six, the Chief Justice of the Federation, Justice Olukayode Ariwola, has sworn in members of the Election Petition Tribunal for the 2023 general elections. The event took place on Monday at the National Judicial Institute in Abuja, the country's political capital. The CGN urged the judicial officers not to treat the assignments with levity, warning that he will not tolerate any form of judicial recklessness. The exercise kicked off a four-day capacity workshop for the justices and members of the tribunal to end on Thursday. On his part, the INEC chairman said the commission has been joined in at least 600 cases arising from the recent conduct of party primaries. At number seven, the federal high court in Abuja will hear the preliminary objection filed by Senator Rochas Okorocha, praying for an order quashing the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission's 2.9 billion naira charge against him on November 22nd. Justice Ian Ekwo adjourned the matter to allow EFCC's counsel G.K. Latona respond to the preliminary objection filed by Ola Ola Nipwekun on Okorocha's behalf. Okorocha, who currently represents Imo Southwest Senatorial District, described the suit as being unlawful, baseless, oppressive, and a gross abuse of the process of the court. Okorocha, who is the first defendant, was arraigned alongside Ayin Yerere Chinyeye, Naftali International Limited, Perfect Finish Multi Projects Limited, Consolid Project Consulting Limited, Pramif International Limited, and Legend Wall Concepts Limited, as second to seventh defendants, respectively. At number eight, the national president of the Nigerian Institute of Town Planners, Ulutoyin Ayende, has urged the federal government to give adequate support to town planners to tackle the menace of improper planning, considering the country's fast-growing population. 
I in they met the call in Abuja during a one week long ceremony that encompasses the investiture of 51 members, including seven women. He also urged the newly inducted fellows to be honest, humble, and embrace what will bring national development. At number nine, bank customers of various banks in the country have lamented the increasing spate of illegal withdrawals from their accounts. Some of the customers who were victims of the acts described the acts as fraudulent, which the authorities must urgently address. They also alleged that most illegal deductions in banks were being done in connivance with bank staff. Meanwhile, the president of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, Ken Obara, had said that the council was resolute and committed to the observance and maintenance of ethics and professionalism among practitioners in the banking industry. On the other hand, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has said the most banking fraud handled by the commission showed that bank employees aided the act. Finally, at number 10, a multinational tech company, Apple, on Monday warned customers to expect delays in the shipment of iPhones due to COVID-19 restrictions at a manufacturing factory in China. Apple manufacturing partner Foxconn iPhone plant in Zhengzhou, China is operating under restrictions temporarily impacting the primary iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max assembly facility. Recently, there were reports that workers at the iPhone assembly factory in China ran away from the premises after a spurt of COVID-19 cases, which forced a complete lockdown at the factory. Apple stated that it was working closely with the supplier to return to normal production levels while ensuring the health and safety of every worker. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.